This lesson is part one of section 10.8 on Demov's theorem. We're actually not going to work on Demov's theorem yet. That's going to be part two. For today, our objectives are going to be to write complex numbers in rectangular form and polar form, and also to multiply and divide complex numbers that are written in polar form. Now we've studied complex numbers in this course before, so I want you to recall that a complex number is any number that can be written in the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers and i is the imaginary unit. Now every complex number written in this rectangular form, a plus bi, can be associated with its own unique ordered pair of real numbers, a, b. All right, so here I've got a complex plane. Now notice it looks very similar to the rectangular plane. Um, the only difference is that we denote the x-axis as the real axis and the y-axis as the imaginary axis. So for this particular complex number written in the form a plus bi, which is in rectangular form, this is represented in the complex plane as the coordinate a, b. Okay, so this is your imaginary axis here. Now let's graph some, some complex numbers in the complex plane real quick. So here I have this first point, 2 plus 3i. So I have a real part, 2, and my imaginary part, 3i. So I've got my real axis and my imaginary axis here. So I'm going to go over 2 units in the real axis and up 3 units on the imaginary axis, and this represents the point A. Now if I want to represent the point B, here I have a real part, negative 3, so I go left 3, and then up 5, so here's point B. Now these are a little bit trickier. Um, for point C here, this is negative 4 plus 0i. So every real number can also be written as a complex number here with an imaginary part. So if I want to graph negative 4 plus 0i, that's going to be negative 4 in the real axis here. And then I move up 0i, so here is point C. Now point D is 0 minus 3i. So here I'm just going to go down on my imaginary axis 3 units, so this is point D. Now every complex number can also be written in polar form, and in order to convert from rectangular form to polar form, we can use polar rectangular relationships that we've seen previously in section 10.6, so they're going to be really similar to what we've already done when we try to convert a rectangular coordinate to its polar form. So here I've got a picture, and you can see that the complex plane is overlapping the polar coordinate system. So here I have some real number z written in the form a plus bi. So right now this is in rectangular form. And just based off of our diagram, we know that that complex number can be represented by a unique point a, b, where a is your real part and b is the imaginary part. Now we can also represent that same coordinate a, b in polar form as r theta. So we want to take this complex number z written right now in the form a plus bi. So this is in rectangular form here. And we want to convert this into polar form. Okay, to do that, we're going to look at some of the relationships that we can see from the diagram. Now, um, based off of the Pythagorean theorem, I can see that r squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, or r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Now, r in, in um, polar form, these complex numbers in polar form, we're going to consider r to always be positive. That's why I'm not writing plus or minus out here. So r is positive, and r is also called the modulus of z. Okay, so it's the modulus of your complex number, and in this case we call that complex number z. So this is a term here that's going to come in use. Um, I just wanted to introduce you to this vocabulary term because when we go to multiplying and dividing complex numbers, I, I refer to the modulus of z. Okay, we also have some trig relationships that we can see from our diagram. If I solve um, for a, I find that a is going to equal r times the cosine of theta, and b will equal r times the sine of theta. I'll also end up with the tangent of theta equals b over a, or theta equals the inverse tangent of b over a. So I went through those pretty quick because we've already seen those before. Now the reason why we're trying to express a and b in terms of r and theta is because we want to eventually take z, which is written as a plus bi, so this is rectangular form, and we want to convert this to polar form where we only see um, something in terms of r and theta. So all we have to do now is make substitutions. Okay, a is r times the cosine of theta, so we have this complex number z can be written as r cosine theta now, that represents the a, um, plus b, which is r sine theta, times i. So this is a complex number written in polar form. Now your textbook factors out that r, and we are going to as well, but they factor out that r and they write that as the cosine of theta plus i times the sine of theta. Now, I just find this to be pretty cumbersome to have to write that every single time, so we shorten this up in the course and we call this cis form. So in cis form, we take a complex number z 
and we write this as r cis theta. Okay, so it's definitely abbreviated. Now you have to remember that r, your modulus, is going to be multiplied by the cosine of theta. So the cosine of this theta. Oh, I forgot to mention theta is the argument. So that's another vocabulary term. So theta is the argument um, for this complex number. So we have the modulus r multiplied by the cosine of theta plus i sine theta. So you have to remember that you're adding i times the sine of theta. So it just represents cosine, you know, c represents cosine, s represents sine. So for cis form, if we have some complex number z written in the form a plus bi, we can convert that into polar form r cis theta, okay? All right, let's try our first example here um, where we're trying to convert this complex number that is currently in polar form. We also call it trig form because we're ready in terms of trig functions. So right now this is a complex number written in polar form and we wanna convert it into rectangular form. So here's how your book is gonna represent it, but in the course here, we just abbreviate that as three times cis pi over three, okay? So this is cis form here. Now I wanna eventually try to rewrite z in terms of a and b, okay? So let's, let's talk about how we can do that. All right, so we wanna remember that a can be written as r times the cosine of theta and b is r times the sine of theta. So now all we have to actually do is make some substitutions. We already know what our r value is. From here in cis form, we can see r is equal to three and theta is equal to pi over three. This is our modulus, this is our argument. So if we wanna write out a, the value for a is going to be found by taking 3 times the cosine of pi over 3, and b will be found by taking r, sorry, 3, times the sine of pi over 3. So here, if I want to solve for a, I take the cosine of pi over 3, now that's the high point, so that'll be 1 half, and b is equal to 3 times the sine of pi over 3, which is, again, your high point, so that, that sine is root 3 over 2. So we end up with a equals 3 halves and b equals 3 root 3 over 2. So in rectangular form, if I want to convert that, I write z is equal to 3 halves plus 3 root 3 over 2i. Don't forget about that imaginary part. All right, let's try one more example. Here we have a complex number written in um, polar form. So this is 6 cis 5 pi over 3. And I want to convert this into rectangular form a plus bi. So I know that a is going to be found by taking r times the cosine of theta, and b can be found by taking r times the sine of theta. Now in this case, 6 is my modulus, so 6 is r. My angle measure, the argument, is 5 pi over 3, so I have 6 times the cosine of 5 pi over 3, and b will be found by taking 6 times the sine of 5 pi over 3. Now in this case, 5 pi over 3 is again another high point on your unit circle, but it's in the fourth quadrant. So we have a positive x value and a negative y value. So we have a equals 6 times positive 1 half, and b is equal to 6 times negative uh, root 3 over 2. So if I want to convert this into rectangular form, z, that complex number, can be written as 3 minus uh, 3 root 3 i. Again, don't forget about that imaginary part. Okay, in our next two examples, we're gonna take a complex number that is currently in rectangular form and we're gonna convert that into trig form or polar form. So here I'm just using both of those terms interchangeably. I think your book says trig form a lot, so I just want you to get used to the fact that that just means polar form. All right, so we have z is equal to negative root two plus i root two, which means a is equal to negative root two and b is equal to root two. Now remember, we want everything in terms of r and theta, so we know that r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So if I evaluate this, I have the square root of negative two squared, so that's two plus the square root of two squared, so that's another two. So r is equal to the square root of four, which is just two. So that's my modulus. Now for the angle, I know that the relationship that is useful here is the tangent of theta is equal to b over a. So tangent of theta is equal to root two over negative root two, which is equal to negative one. Now we want to solve for theta. So if the tangent of theta is equal to negative one, theta is either going to equal three pi over four or seven pi over four. Now we need to pick one of those angles. It can't be both. So let's go back to the fact that this 
complex number, if we were going to graph this in the complex plane, it would have to lie in quadrant 2 because we're going to go negative root 2 first and then up root 2 units. So we're going to say that this particular complex number lies in quadrant 2, which means we do not use the angle 7 pi over 4. So this is really, really important. I know some of you guys had trouble on that when we were converting rectangular to polar coordinates. So it's the same idea here as well. So we're going to pick 3 pi over 4, and we have our r value, which is 2. So if we want to convert this into cis form, then a z is equal to r cis theta. So we have 2 cis 3 pi over 4. So that's our answer when we try to convert that into polar or trig form. Okay, before we move on to example two, I just want to mention that your book obviously will not use that notation, so you have to make sure you understand how to break that back down into the more complex form of cis notation. Um, but also, this answer is not unique. Um, remember when we were dealing with rectangular coordinates and trying to convert them to polar form, there was an infinite number of ways that you could express a rectangular coordinate in, in polar form. And the same thing goes when we're trying to express this complex number in its polar form. Um, and that's because the sine and cosine functions are periodic. So I could express z as 2 cis 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. Okay, so any interval, because if I just rotate around one more time through that circle, I still end up at that exact same um, complex number. So just make sure that you understand that, because that's going to come into play in tomorrow's lesson. Okay, in my next example, I want to switch this from rectangular form to polar form. So I'm going to identify a, which is negative 4, and b, which is 3, so that I can find the modulus of z. So remember, the modulus of z is denoted with r, and that's going to equal the square root of negative 4 squared. So 16 plus your b squared, so 9. We end up with 5. So my modulus of z is 5. Now, I also want to find the angle measure. And I know that the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, so 3 over negative 4. Now, unfortunately, this is not a known trig value for us, so we would have to rely on our calculator. So we would type into our calculator the inverse tangent of 3 over negative 4. Remember, your inverse tangent function on your calculator only um, gives outputs in terms of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, so or from negative 90 to positive 90. So if your angle measure is in um, degrees here, you're going to get an angle measure of negative 36.87. Um, okay, I guess I should just round that to 0.9. So we get negative 36.9, but um, in this case, let's just graph negative 4 plus 3i. That would be, again, somewhere in the second quadrant, so this is also in quadrant 2. I don't want to use negative 36.9. This shows this is the angle measure down here, and I want to get the angle measure here. So what I have to do is add 180 degrees to negative 36.9. So when I do that, I end up with uh, theta equaling 143.1, okay? So if I want to write this in cis form, remember cis form is r cis theta, here I, instead of having a, a nice um, angle value here, I'm just going to plug that in. So I have, uh, let's see, r was 5, so let's, do, let's label this correctly, z, that complex number is written in polar form as 5 times cis theta 143.1. Okay, so this would be an example where you'd have to rely on a calculator in order to do that. Um, you could also write this, if you're showing the exact answer, you could write this as z is equal to 5 times cis of the inverse tangent of 3 over negative 4, right? Because this is the angle measure, theta. So this just represents theta here, and that's, again, just showing if you wanted to do it in exact terms. But this is um, how I would want you to do it if you had to rely on using a calculator. Okay, our second objective for this lesson is to be able to multiply and divide complex numbers. Now, I'm going to derive for you the formula that we use for multiplying complex numbers, and it's going to be pretty short, but um, I'm going to use two arbitrary complex numbers, z1 and z2. Okay, so instead of using the cis notation, I'm going to use the long book notation here for z1 and z2. So if I want to multiply these out, I have to write all of this out. So I have r1 times the cosine of theta1 plus i times the sine of theta2 multiplied by r2 times the cosine of theta2 plus the sine of, oops, sorry, i sine theta2. All right, now, um, since multiplication is commutative, I can just multiply r1 and r2 together. So I have r1 times r2, multiplied now by these two binomials. Now those binomials, if we multiply them, that's just foiling. So if I foil these terms, the first terms here would give me cosine theta1 times cosine theta2, whoops, the inner terms would give me i sine theta 2. Oh, geez, that's a sine theta 1, sorry. 
that should say sine theta 1. I'm just using the substitution here. So I have I sine theta 1 times cosine theta 2. Okay, That would be the inner terms. The um, outside terms, cosine theta 1 times I sine theta 2. And then finally, the last terms, I sine theta 1 times I sine theta 2. Well, when I multiply I times I, I get I squared, which is negative 1. So I have minus sine theta 1 sine theta 2. And i got to move this a little bit. OK. Now, if I look closely inside this product here of after I foiled, I have cosine theta 1 times cosine theta 2 minus sine theta 1 times sine theta 2. This is just using an angle addition formula. This is the cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2. Okay, So let's rewrite r1 times r2 out front. Now, I also can recognize that I can factor out an i here, leaving me with sine theta 1 times cosine theta 2 plus cosine theta 1 times sine theta 2. Okay, and after I um, factor that out, I recognize that this is simply the sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. Sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Okay, So if I just drag down all these terms here, I have r1 times r2 times the cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus i times the sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. So this is what you get. This is the product when you multiply two complex numbers together. All right, so just to reiterate the formula that we just derived for multiplying complex numbers, I have it written here. Now that's a lot to take in, especially if we're not you know, used to using this, this notation here. So I'm going to convert this to cis notation and shorten this up. So we have two complex numbers, z1 and z2. Well, what we're going to do is multiply the two moduli, so r1 times r2, and then multiply that by cis of theta1 plus theta2. Okay. So that's the same formula here um, for multiplying two complex numbers. In other words, here I have written down to multiply complex numbers. All you need to do is multiply the moduli of each of those complex numbers, and then you add your arguments. So that's why I wanted you to know this notation, because we're going to talk about the modulus and the argument of each of those um, complex numbers. Now, we're not going to derive it, but to divide complex numbers, you are going to divide the moduli and subtract the arguments. Okay, So in cis notation here, z1 divided by z2 is going to be found by dividing your two arguments, I'm sorry, your, your moduli, and then multiplying by cis of theta 1 minus theta 2. Okay? All right, so let's work on a couple examples of each. Okay, in my last couple examples here, I want to multiply two complex numbers that are currently written in polar form. Um, I'm just going to shorten it up, though, and write z as 8 cis 5 pi over 3. And I'll do the same for w. So w is 4 cis 2 pi over 3. Now, when I multiply uh, two complex numbers in polar form, I know that I first have to multiply the moduli. So I'm going to multiply 8 times 4. Then I'm going to take that and multiply by cis of the two arguments added together. So 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3. Now if I simplify this, I have 32 cis 7 pi over 3. Okay, Right now, this is called trig form. And it's in trig form or polar form because everything's in terms of a trig function here. Um, I could simplify this even further, though, because 7 pi over 3, that is, um, if I wanted to do this in terms of um, an angle measure between 0 and 2 pi, that would be the same as pi over 3. Or the high point, I guess I should draw it up higher like that. Um, that's because you're going around one full rotation and ending up at pi over 3. So 7 pi over 3 probably should be simplified. I believe your book will simplify that as pi over 3. Okay, so there's trig form. Now we want to take it a step further though and we want to write this in rectangular form. So I'm going to actually evaluate this to write it in rectangular form. So we take 32 times the cosine of pi over 3 plus i times the sine of pi over 3. Okay, so let's just evaluate this. We have 32 times the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. i times the sine of pi over 3 is going to be i times root 3 over 2. And then if I just distribute that 32 out in front, I end up with 16 plus 16 root 3 times i. So this is the rectangular form when I multiply these two complex numbers. All right, now I'm going to erase to make some room, and then we're going to divide these two complex numbers. OK, so I want to find the quotient of z and w. So when you divide two complex numbers, you have to make sure you divide the actual moduli first. So we take 8 divided by 4, and then we multiply that by cis of 
the two arguments subtracted from one another. So 5 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3. So if I simplify here, I have 2 cis pi. Okay. Now this would be in trig form or polar form. Okay. So this would be my answer here um, when I ask for trig form. Now I also want to answer this in rectangular form. So it's really important that you understand to answer this in rectangular form, you need it in the form a plus bi. So we need two real numbers here. Okay. No more trig functions. So we're going to evaluate again. When we evaluate, we take 2 and we multiply it by the cosine of theta, oh, I'm sorry, pi, plus i times the sine of pi. Okay, so we have 2 times the cosine of pi is negative 1, plus i times the sine of pi is 0. So we end up with negative 2. So when we divide these two complex numbers, we write that in rectangular form as simply negative 2. All right, so that's the end of the lesson. Please make sure you're comfortable writing a complex number in both polar form and rectangular form, and you are comfortable also with multiplying and dividing complex numbers and writing your answer either in trig form or in um, rectangular form. All right, I will see you guys tomorrow.